from opening my mouth, but there is a large percentage of high school students that do not graduate. For whatever reason, they get distracted, they get confused, and they stop. But today, we congratulate you, and I'm going to preach, preach, teach, something. We're going to do something here in a minute. But in, uh, in doing that, I'm going to be speaking to the whole church, but really to our graduates. So I want us to, uh, I want you to help me, and I want you to pray that God would have his way. Can we join together in prayer right now? Lord, we worship you. We honor you. Pray for our graduates. Come on, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you to look upon us today. Pray that you would have your way. Uh, I pray that you would honor us with your spirit. Bless us, Lord, with your understanding and wisdom. Lord, I pray that you would bless these graduates. As I speak into their lives, I pray that you would bless this church, Lord, to hear the words, Lord God, that you have given, that we would be, Lord God, what you want us to be. I pray in the name of Jesus, give us wisdom and understanding, give us, anoint us with your spirit, we pray. Let your spirit have free reign here today, in Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to open with uh, four verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 4, uh, just Bear with me. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. I'm going to be speaking. Really, it's kind of a, a, a buckshot method or a, a birdshot method. I'm going to be preaching to everybody, but it's focused on our young people. I would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly. And indeed, bear with me. So this is Paul saying, bear with me. I say that a lot, don't I? Bear with me. Bear with me. God. And, and he says, this is what Paul says. I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband and that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. He's talking, of course, metaphorically in the spiritual realm. He's, he has taught them so they would be married, dedicated, committed to Jesus Christ. But I fear, and this is where the hard part comes in, but I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve, through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity, the purity, if you will, that is in Christ. For if he that comes preaches another Jesus, whom, you have not, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we, you have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, that you might well bear with him. So, like Paul, I'm going to ask you to Bear with me. And uh, like Paul as well, I honestly look at these beautiful young ladies. I don't know your future. I don't know what you're going to do. But I have a jealousy for you. And it's a godly jealousy, just like Paul wrote. I have been honored, my wife and I, whether it be running her hair and hands through your hair, Haley, or just talking to you and loving on you, helping you in times of need, I feel like I have invested into you part of my life to help you to become what I believe God wants you to become. I believe God has something great for you. And I want so badly to present you to Christ, pure and dedicated to serve him. But my, my greatest desire is to leave as, as a, a general principle, and this is to all of us, my greatest desire as a pastor, and in fact I would say my life, is to present uh, the Lord a people that he can use to leave the next generation with a church that is pure uh, a church full of people that are dedicated to serve him and, and to help the world recognize by our example that, that there's a better way to live that's, that's my overarching desire in life of course I want to be a good husband and good dad, good granddaddy and all that kind of stuff but what we must all recognize today is that Satan does beguile. It's just, I want you to recognize this. I want you to realize this. It's very important. Satan beguiles. And we don't use that word anymore, but what does it mean? It means tricks. He tricks. Satan is truly a trickster. He is a tricker. Tricker, tricker. And uh, he is a, as, as defined, a cunning or skillful act of scheme intended to outwit or deceive someone else. He is a beguiler. And if anybody will live for, for Christ, we must almost always recognize that Satan hates that. 
You must, it's, it's got to, at, at first it might be that you do this on a daily or a, an hourly or a weekly or whatever basis. You're constantly having to remind yourself, I've got to be careful of Satan when I come out of the world and, and came into the church. I mean, it was, it was like I had to be uh, hyper aware of my flesh. Anybody know what I mean? Come on, church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I had to be very, very aware of my flesh, but I also had to be aware that Satan, he knows how to play me. He knows how to play me. He is a beguiler. He's a trickster. And so if anyone will live for Christ, what we must do almost, almost at all times is commit ourselves to understanding our first and primary commitment. I will live for God. I made up my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for God, period. doesn't matter what happens the rest of my life. doesn't matter what happens today or what happens to me, but I'm going to live for Christ. So not only, but not only is Satan a trickster, but he uses those around us in his games. He is tricky with us as well as to us. Also Satan and those he uses, he will beguile and trick unwary souls. People that aren't aware of what's going on. So not only, uh, not one adult in this building is, um, has kept themselves from these tricks. Not one adult can, in this building, including myself, can say, I, he didn't get me. <laughs> he got all of us. One way or another, whatever level it may be, he's tricked us all. Some it has taken us years to overcome, and some it just took a moment of time to go back to an altar and repent. And some it took us a lot of work to overcome things that weigh on our mind. Not one adult is exempt. And through these tricks, such as they are, he has used, and I, I only list a few here, and I think that we need to recognize this, he uses offense. Offense is, I think, one of the, the, the most useful tools today that Satan uses. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them to be offended at something, someone, it doesn't even have to be the pastor. It can be anybody. But we'd prefer to use the pastor, you know. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a trick. I'm going to get them to be offended in the church somehow. I'm going to get them to be offended in the authority or the leadership. I don't even like using the word authority, but that's, there is that concept. But he wants to use offense. Another one that he likes to use is guilt. He wants to load innocent, unwary souls with guilt. That's a plan that he uses. It's a trick. I want you to be, I'm trying to tell you, I don't, you're not going to remember most of this. I don't think you will. I want you to remember a few things. Satan wants to use your life as a playground for his evil work. He will use offense. He will use guilt. And unfortunately for many of us, he will use what I'm going to call, and it's been called before, easy believism. That there is a relationship you can have with Christ but not take up a cross. You can have the crown with no cross. And that is another way that, that unfortunately in our world, it's just a trick. These tricks are only act number one though. Act one is, uh, I'm gonna keep you offended, I'm gonna keep you guilty, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this mindset that there's, an, there's another way that you can live without having to take up your cross. There's, that's just all, that's just act number one. Be offended, be hurt. Be confused, be whatever, be, look for the easy way, if you will. But act two, act two, Satan tells us that we can find something better somewhere else. Oh, man, I did, it just, it's just so irritating to me when I realize, looking back, that not only did he say, you don't have to do that, or you don't have to do that, but there's actually an easier, better way somewhere else. You can, you can do anything you want to. Offense, you know, offense doesn't exist out there. Guilt doesn't exist over there. This, this is the only, these things only happen when you're trying to live for God. Oh, what a, what a trick, right? What a beguiling. What's crazy is Eve didn't have to be beat over the head. Eve didn't have to be threatened with a gun. She just had to be tricked. Just had to be told in her little ear on a little day, you can be like God. <laughs> what, a, what a weird concept that any of us would think that we can, we can overcome uh, 
something more than God, do something better than God, or whatever it may be. But in other words, there is alternatives to His Word and to His ways. Young people today, and, and I, I speak again to these graduates, but I speak to all of us. There is no alternative to Jesus Christ. There is no, there is, I don't care what trick he plays. I don't care what alternative he gives. There is nothing else besides, let me tell you, there is purity. There, there's nothing like the purity of holiness. There's nothing like the peace of godliness. There's nothing like the, the purity of a, of a marriage that, that has come together when it's, when it's been born of God and not of lust. There's so many things in life, and I don't want to get into details. I really want to try to keep, a, 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 like I said earlier in our Bible study, a, a, a macro view. There is no alternative to the Word of God or His promises. Eve was deceived because she wasn't aware of his tricks. So you enter this time in your life as a young person. You're getting ready to go into the world. And, and uh, by the way, don't do a crime. I'm going to punish you more than in the past. In the past, they said, oh, you're a minor or whatever. Yeah, it's, those days are over. Which we've got all girls. They don't do crimes, do they? Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm thankful. In 1 Corinthians, Paul writes to straighten out some things in the church. He tried, if you want to read 1 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, Paul uh, writes to congratulate them on their progress, but he's still concerned. <laughs> Congratulations on your progress, but I'm concerned. That's what Paul is saying. Congratulations on the good work you've done, but eh, I'm worried. I'm not saying that I'm worried because of your name or who you are, or you're, this year you're graduating, I'm worried, I'm worried about all of us. I'm worried that all of us have the, the possibility of being beguiled as Satan or the serpent, as Paul said, as a serpent beguiled Eve, that who, all of us are, are susceptible to that same, that same trickery, if you will, if we're, not, if we're not very wise and very careful. And part of that, that concern is, is felt in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He says, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent tricked Eve, through his subtlety, subtlety, wow, his little sneaky ways. I want you to know, young people, and, and I, I'm going to keep saying this, I'm sorry, but young people in the church alike, don't ever think that Satan's not sneaky. He is sneaky. He'll, you, you know, well, who, was to, who would think that a fence would cause you to stumble and make hell? I mean, not heaven. Who would think that one little offense caused by somebody, you know, well, he didn't say that, or he said that, or he did this, or he did that. And you stumble, and you fall, and you miss the promises of God. Who would think such silliness? But it happens all the time. Because he's subtle. He uses us. You know, I, I, I've, I've said this to myself, and, and I guess I can say it, I'm going to say it to you too. I think Satan knows me a little bit. I think he knows what motivates me and moves me. Come on now. Come on, men. Come on, ladies. I think Satan knows what moves me and pushes me and pushes my butt. You think my wife knows my buttons? He knows them too. And he uses them. And he used them on Eve. And Paul is saying, I'm worried because just as he was he's deceptive and tricky with Eve, I'm afraid he's going to do the same to you. And the problem is that you're going to, he's going to use a trick on you. He's, listen, think about this. He's talking to the church. Paul is, Paul is writing to the church. He's going to deceive you. He's going to trick you. And you're going to believe that there is another Jesus. Or maybe a, an, another spirit or another gospel. And church, what, what he's warning, what Paul is uh, warning him is, is there's not another Jesus. There's not another spirit. There's not another gospel. There's one gospel, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One, one, one. And where we fail is when we think we have alternatives. That's where we fail. And all of my friends that I loved growing up and graduated high school with, not all of them, but all of them that are out of the church today fell for that alternative. And it's a sad thing for me, but at the same time, I, I, I like Paul, I feel like, and I'm, I'm trying to do so in the right way. I'm trying 
to make you aware. You was given, if you was, if we were to, I wish I would have brought my tool pouch up here today or my tool bag. And I'd have shown you, you're, you were given all these tools as a young person in school. Did you learn how to read? Did you learn how to write? Did you, do they still teach cursive? They teach cursive? No, yes. Some of you, some of you got cursive, some didn't. Did you learn how to do uh, arithmetic? Algebra? Good. Whew. I hated algebra. Oh, my. I can't tell you. I went back years later and went for my master's, and they had me take some crazy class like statistics. Oh, dear God. I was like 45 years old, and I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I had to take a tutor. I had to get a tutor in law. For, don't be afraid of tutors. They're okay. They're here to help you. I'm a tutor. Your mom was a tutor. Ministry in the church is tutors. We're trying to help you. You've given, given all these tools in your, your path through high school, and, and then they're saying, okay, here's your tools. Go use them. But sometimes you don't know how to use them. They don't know. They don't, they don't look ahead and say, hey, you're going to run into this financial problem, or you're going to have this, this uh, marriage problem, or they're going to have this spirit. They don't tell you all that. They just say, here's some tools. Here's your bag. Get after it. And you're like, ah, what do I do? Go back to a place where you can trust people that are truly living for God. And don't let a fence grow without working on pulling out a tool and say, wait a second, i got something to work with that. I've got some place I can go for to fix the offense, to fix the greed, to fix the, the challenge that is before me, whatever it may be. I honor you today, and I'm, I'm thankful for you, but I'm concerned because we live in a very wicked world. A world that, it's like, I mean, honestly, Satan don't need much help. Because we live in a world that is so easily offended. A world that is so greedy. A world that is so enamored in themselves. I mean, this is all 2 Second Timothy chapter 3. A world that is, that is disrespectful and disobedient and hateful and, and confused and perverted. We live in that world. That is, you live in a world that is much harder than my world when I was your age. Now, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just telling you, that's the, way, that's the way it is, is it not? Our adult, every adult in here can tell us the same thing. Yes, you are entering into a world that is much harder than the world that we entered. You need to be wiser than we were. But you can't do it on your own. You cannot do it on your own. You need help. And it's not just the mathematics or the, the arithmetic, if you will. It's not the algebra or the biology or the, or the English that's going to get you to where you want to be. It's going to be the one true God, the one true spirit, the one true gospel. That's what we need more than we need anything else. You need to hold on to the church. Oh, if I could just grab you, and I, I would. If I, I mean, I would just grab you. Please. There is no alternative. You want peace, and I'm telling you, peace has a price. It has a, uh, when you get a little older, you, you peace, it, there, the value of peace is like, peace is more important and more, more valuable than almost anything else in our lives, is it not? If you want peace, don't fall for the tricks of Satan. Don't fall. There are people here now today that, that have suffered greatly because of the tricks that Satan has played on their lives. They have fallen as well as I have. I'm not, I'm not immune to that, that falter or the failing. I, I, in fact, I, one of the songs we were singing up here today was, uh, reminded me of where God brought me from. And I, I was thinking, it, it's, it's incredible. It's the grace of God that I'm here. It's, 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 um, I'm dumbfounded that God, I didn't, in my life, our world wasn't as confused or, or crazy as the one you're entering. And, and girls, please listen to me just for a minute. You're entering a messed up world. Don't join the mess. Hold on to the truth. If you die holding on, hold on. You need peace. Find it in Jesus. You need salvation? Find it in Jesus. You need hope? Find it in Jesus. You need help? Find it in Jesus. Because all these other things are just alternatives that are... That are Paul, Paul said it's, it's, it's the beguiling of Satan. It's a trick. He's playing. There's another way to live for God without all this uh, burden. Come on. I, this is no burden. This is a, this is a blessing. 
this is, but, but Satan will play tricks on you. Oh, you don't, you don't have to do all that. You don't have, do you remember last week when I used the little puzzle that, that uh, Jenga? Was y'all here last week when I used Jenga? And he pulled out these pieces and, and yeah, I don't need that. I don't need that. Before long, you got, you got your tower and its own shaky sand. And then the world starts going, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> and that's, that's our lives. And I'm telling you today, if you'll build your life on the foundation of the one true God, the one salvation plan, the one gospel, the one spirit delivered unto us, you'll be blessed. So I want to I wanna quickly go to a close. When I was a young man, we used to play tricks on people. Anybody play tricks on people? Do you ever TP houses? That, was, that means, do y'all, do y'all TP houses? You know what that means? Oh, you do? Okay, I, I thought maybe social media is a race to that. T- TP <laughs> means you take toilet paper and you, you throw it over people's houses and trees and cars and you, you just make a mess. And it cost you $40 to have a lot of fun. <laughs> maybe $80 now, but anyway. We used to play tricks on people. I remember one time we beamed, we had, a, we had a neighbor that took so much pride in his yard. Oh, my word. Anybody, anytime, anybody take pride in their yard? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, out there with scissors, like Brother Gilmore, out there with scissors cutting the grass. <laughs> and I had a neighbor, and we played a trick on him. We beamed his yard. We threw scattered beans all in his yard. Those are tricks. We used to play tricks. We used to say, put your finger in that hole. Too slow. You remember, remember it was just... The tricks that we play on each other are so, they're funny, some of them, some, unless somebody's crying and they're not funny. But Satan doesn't play those kind of tricks. He plays tricks for your soul. He wants your soul. Haley, Dee Dee, Natalie, Lexi, he wants your soul. He wants to rob you of peace. He don't say that up front. Remember, he's tricky. He's beguiling. He wants to rob you of peace. And I worry. I love you girls. I'm thankful for you. I really am thankful for you. And this is just the beginning. That's what's cool. You're like, you know, you ever read books? You you still read books in school? Okay, so... um, you go to, <laughs> you know how you, you go to one chapter to the next and something happens. It's like, oh, there's a shift in thought. You're getting ready to have that happen in your life. Maybe you had chapter one was, was before you went to, went to school. And then chapter two might have been just say elementary and, and then now high school. And now you're, but now you're like in an entire different section. And your, your mama and your, your family and, and your friends and all those people that you've known in the past you were dependent upon is shifting and now you're going to have to be dependable upon yourself. So Paul's fear was that, that Satan would beguile them and, and his concerns are profound in the sense that he knew that he knew what awaited this people and it was another Jesus, another spirit and another gospel. I'm going to repeat myself and, and maybe bring out a little bit more and then I'm going to close sh- very shortly. But we, we saw the one Jesus proclaimed upon the cross and in the resurrection in the tomb. We saw the one gospel preached. I don't want you to forget this. I'm telling you, we saw the one gospel. There was one gospel preached to all the world on the day of Pentecost. Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the one gospel. It hasn't changed. He didn't say, oh, there's another group of people. Let's come, let's come up with a plan that's more customized. Something that maybe they can accept a little bit more. There's one spirit was delivered under the church in the book of Acts. We, it, we, and it was still being delivered today. Do not let Satan play tricks on you. I cannot tell you enough. Don't let Satan trick you. And he will trick you. He will trick you to the point to where you're acting like some of us people in this church will pray one minute and go watch something on Netflix the next minute and laugh. And There's people that are being tricked in this church just like that. And they think they're okay. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to help you to understand if adults can be tricked, you're going to be tricked. You're going to be an adult. So I'll hurry. I'm sorry. There is no alternatives. Graduates and everyone else in this building, we must be wise. You can replace this church, talking to you guys, you can replace this church and you can replace me. 
You can, you can find somebody, maybe some building or maybe somebody, a pastor that is better. You can, I mean, in my heart, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, not possible, but it, it's possible. <laughs> you can find a church that is better, and that's possible. But you'll never find, you'll never find a substitute for the love of Jesus and the purity that he has planned for your life. Just to stand, all of us, and I'm going to ask our graduates to come. And stand in the front here. And I'm going to ask my wife to join me. You can leave your gifts there. Nobody's going to steal them. <laughs> come, up, come, come up here just for a minute. I'm not always good at this pastoring or preaching stuff. I'm good at pastoring, I think, for the most part. But I'm not always good at preaching. And these are awkward moments for me. Girls, I've never seen anyone else with more potential than you have. What God can do in your life, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm dumbfounded when I look at you. If you'll allow God to use you, anything can happen. In 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now, you'll look and you'll say, I'm, I'm thankful that I was wiser than Satan. I'm thankful I was aware before I ever went into the world and I didn't do the things that Satan tempted me to do. But you're going to have to make up your mind. I'm telling you that, and the reason why I say that is this. Sister Button, Brother Button, can't hold her hand anymore, can you? You can't do it. Dee Dee. Let's see, you can't, it's, it's, now, I mean, you might can, you, you might can actually hold her hand, take that back, but it's getting close to where she's on her own. Natalie, you're right there. In just a few days, you graduate, and you, and you step out away from the covering of your parents, the, the accountability and the responsibility to, I got to answer to somebody, but this is what you'll never escape. You'll never escape that there's a Lord. There's a Savior. There's a Savior. And He wants to help you and He wants to bless you, but you've got to be accountable to Him. You can never get rid of this word. Ever, ever, ever. You can never get rid of this word. You can, you can toss it aside, but the word doesn't change. You can belittle, the, but it's not going to change it. The fact is this, is, this is where your hope is. This is your peace. This is your, your joy, your salvation. Everything's in here. There's no alternative. There's no alternative. Now, I'm not dumb enough to think that there's not pleasure in this world. I've, I've been there, unfortunately. But the pleasures that the world offers, they come with uh, conditions <laughs> that cost you. So today I'm going to over you. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do this a little bit different today. I believe that the words that I've spoken to these graduates has not just been to the graduates. I believe that this is something that, and, and I wish we, I, honestly, I wish I was, I, I wish that we was more spiritual. I wish we were praying in the altar. I wish we were seeking the face of God. But as my wife and I pray for these graduates, I want to invite anybody. If you need to start over today, if, you've, if you're weighted down with the guilt and the shame and the sin that, that, Satan has put upon you there's a place of repentance and that's that's second that's part two of what I'm going to tell you you're going to mess up but you have a church you have a pastor and you have a savior that loves you and will help you overcome if you just turn to us okay I'm going to ask you to join us if, if parents want to come or anybody that cares Wants to come, we're going to pray for them along the front. You join them in the back. Anybody wants to come and pray, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, honestly, I want you to come. I believe there's people here that need to come pray. But this is a great time for you to start over. Can we do that today in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name.
Yeah.